Kevin Blackstone, Harry Lyles Jr., Sarah Spade, and Tim Kalashaw. Let's start with trivia. Diana Taurasi last night, 30 at the age of 40. First in league history, and then in the MNBA, only two could accomplish it. Who did Taurasi join, national panel? Jordan Michael and James. Jordan. Yep. Michael and Dirk. Dirk Javitsky, that's right, Kalashaw Stone, you got it. Let's go around the horn. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> Dirk and Jordan, the only with 30 point games at the age of 40 until last night with Tarasi. We'll get to that in a second. After seeing the distraction it created, we removed the independent film study addendum from the contract of Calamari. It was clearly perceived in ways that we never intended. Our confidence in Calamari is as high as it's ever been and nothing demonstrates our belief in his ability to lead this team more than the commitment reflected in this contract. I don't need to say any more. Tim Kalashaw, around the horn to you. Your takeaway from the Cardinals statement. And is this closure or does it linger between team and quarterback? I think, I think it's close to closure because I think the important thing to Kyler Murray was the money he got. And he got a lot of money in his second deal. And that's really what it was all about. But it's, it's an embarrassing time for the Cardinals. First of all, when you put out a statement and it's not from the president or the GM or the head coach, it's just from the team. This is how the team feels in general. This is how the Cardinals okay. feel. That never really makes any sense. The Cowboys are forced to do that a lot, unfortunately. But uh, with, his, with this case, if it was important enough to put the clause in, one day of mentions on ESPN right. and Twitter right. and people making fun of it, oh, we're taking it out. We're running, we're running for the hills. We don't want this. Why did you put it in in the first place if it wasn't that important? It looks that like a It clearly was important. This does not exist unless you think there's a need for it. And so Kyler can come out yesterday and call his own presser and say it's disrespectful and blame the media. But the disrespect is coming from inside the house. <laughs> it's your own team that made the contract and then you signed it. So yeah, if you want to take all that money, then own up to that clause needing to be in there. And if you don't think it deserves to be, then work your butt off and prove otherwise. It's too late to put it back in. All they're doing with the press conference and the statement afterwards is bringing more and more attention to it. Because now, at this point, it's like in a trial when someone goes off on a loud rant and the person says, objection, sustained. And it's like, well, you already heard it anyway. You're going to use it against them. <laughs> yeah, stricken from the record. No, I think we all heard it. Yeah. I think we all heard it. All right, so you're suggesting this may linger for Murray and the Cardinals. Harry Lyles Jr., how about you? Yeah, I mean, my biggest takeaway is a question, and that's what way did you intend it to be perceived? Because we're not talking about a clause that's in every contract. This is something that none of us have ever seen before, and that's why it was so weird in the first place. And so, to me, I, I think if you're the Cardinals, at some point, somebody's going to have to come out, whether it's Steve Kime or somebody else, and put your name on this, and you're going to have to answer for it because you don't put it in there unless you have some concern or, or a lack of confidence in his ability to prepare. Because, yes, you could say, look at the dollar amount. Obviously, we believe in him. We're putting a quarter of a billion dollars forward for his future. But that is something else, the clause that speaks to something else. And I think that is something is going to linger because, like Sarah said, as soon as something goes wrong out there on the football field, Twitter, everybody else is going to bring up that clause. And that, because of that, is going to be an issue, along with all the other things that he's dealt with with the team this offseason. KB, do you agree with Sarah and Harry that this lingers? Oh, absolutely. It lingers. In fact, I think it's going to stick for a very, very, very long time. I mean, because what has happened here is the fact that this, the way this came out is that it suggests that um, Kyler Murray doesn't take his job that seriously, that he doesn't put in the study. This is a textbook example of what we talk about when we talk about microaggressions, um, because this is something that black quarterbacks like Kyler Murray have had to fight forever. And so now this is a stain on him going forward. Anytime he has a bad game, somebody will bring this up. 
Um, if they don't make the playoffs, somebody will bring this up. If they fail in the playoffs, somebody will bring this up. They will completely overlook the fact that he has gotten better and better and better in his years in this league, that he has quarterbacked a bad team, a losing team, and turned it into a, um, a playoff team that has aspirations to go even further, um, that he has turned himself into a face in this league, one of the most exciting players in this league, a guy who has been able to get it done and gotten better himself. So this will stay with him for well, a while. Let me ask a follow-up then, because this is the third day this week we've talked about it, and at the same third time day. we've had multiple conversations with other uh, stories about coded language about black quarterbacks, because Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. All that can exist in reality, and at the same time, Another thing could exist in reality, right, Kevin, that he has had fall-offs in the second half of seasons. There has been questioning of his play, even in the playoff game, and whether he's the leader of this team. That exists as well, right, Kevin? Well, it does exist, but I'm not sure that it's fair, and I'm not sure that it has something to do with his cerebral abilities, which is what this clause in this contract suggests and that is the problem and and let's say and let's even if all of that is true do you handle it the way that it got That's, handled I, think so. I would argue that you absolutely Dallas don't. show back in yeah I mean I, I do think there is a, a thing that Kyler caused this a little bit with that quote to the New York Times I'm not one of those guys who studies film 24 hours a day he basically said intuitively I know how to play this position and I can see what's going on now he's kind of backed off from that and, and said, of course, I study film, and, I, and I'm sure he does, but clearly the Cardinals thought he needed a little more work and at Sarah. it. Sarah. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between cerebral abilities and the cognitive abilities that Kyler attributes to himself that he says are the reason he doesn't need to study as much, and actual proof of concept. Kevin, for, for what we know on the outside, you may think of this as a microaggression, but they might have actual tracking abilities, which is what I've been told about the playbooks and the, 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 the Microsoft uh, tablets that they get. They actually track how often you're on it, whether you're watching it, whether your eyes are on that or something else, whether you're responding to the prompts in time. So this is is not, I don't think, especially if it's in a contract like this, something that's based on conjecture, but rather based on proof that they have that he hasn't put the work like in. KB, respond but to that. we don't know that. We absolutely do not know that. That is 100% But don't you think that's probably the case if it's in this problem. contract? I'm not, I'm, not going, I'm not even going to speculate as to why they put this in, the, in this contract. But the problem to me is that this is what people will conclude now that well, this that's is what it is. news. What, what, that that's the intention it and how it's received, they don't always match up, and you have to be aware of that. Last word, Tim Kalashaw. The last conclusion people have reached is that Kyler's numbers drop off when Call of Duty is released every <laughs> fall. That is an interesting stat. I have no idea what it means. Same. But... Hopefully, that'll stop. Mm -hmm. Harry, did you say same, that your stats on our show go down <laughs> yeah. when ha Call of Duty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. One more story here. Another contract with a clause, which just sounds like a terrible Nick Cage movie. Nick Cage, elderly James Dean, <laughs> contract with a clause. New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson, their big new agreement reportedly including his weight must be below 295 pounds when you take his weight and you add in body fat percentage. That weigh-ins will periodically be done by the team at their discretion, and if he fails them, his contract can be de-escalated. Just like it could be escalated with uh, all-star or all-NBA uh, nods. Sarah, how do you hear that? Does that create a distraction? Will anything linger there? It makes sense to me, knowing what we know about his body, his injuries, and his availability. And while it may be awkward or uncomfortable, it's obviously something that he and the team agreed to because they recognize how much money is going into him and how much that will be related to his ability to be out on the court, which has been in question throughout his career. So it makes sense to me. And while we don't see things this often, whether we're talking about Kyler or Zion, usually there's a reason why we're seeing it, which is why I don't believe conjecture about either Zion's ability to stay healthy or Kyler's ability to study enough is, is based on nothing. I, I think that if you're going to run the risk of the uh, shame or the embarrassment that's related to these contract clauses, you're doing it because you think there's a okay, reason. Okay, so while you agree both of these clauses, going back to the last story, we're in it for a reason. You think this one's okay for a team to make a statement on weight? 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's about body shaming. It's about the ability to do your job. And they've clearly worked, I would imagine, with trainers and specialists to say this is sort of the window that you need to be in. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult for you to keep up, be available, not get injured, etc. Harry Lyles Jr. I, I, I don't really have a problem with it. I think I would have a bigger problem with it if it was some cartoonish type of number. This is 10 pounds over the playing weight that's been listed for him when he was a Duke and when he has been with the Pelicans. Mm. I, I know a lot of conversation has gone into his weight just because he we haven't seen him play basketball in a while and he's been dealing with these injuries. But I do think it is good that they've taken their time with it because he is a bigger, taller athlete. He's one of the most gifted athletes I think we've ever seen. And so the fact that they're kind of giving him this room, I think it allows them to have a little bit of a safety net just because of his health. But I don't think it's anything super alarming, again, just because it's 10 pounds over his playing weight. And given his athleticism, I think he's a guy that would eventually just get back into but shape. But point blank, do you believe this lands in a similar place like the Kyle Murray, where it puts the player in a position where he's set up for ridicule? Perhaps, because I do think that people like to pick on Zion for his weight in ways that I feel is a little bit unwarranted, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's something that he's going to have a tough time battling. Tim, when, when Harry brought up the idea that it was 10 pounds over his playing weight, you shook your head no. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 295, but it's weight plus body mass index or yeah, body, fat, body fat, and that's probably going to be in the 20% range for him. So really, he was listed at 285 at Duke. I doubt that he weighed 270, and Duke just decided to call it 285. So if that's kind of his normal weight, He's going to be challenged to make to make this number. Kevin Blackstone. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know I'm not moved by this one particularly, yeah. just because you know making weight in sports is a part of sports. You know, it, it can qualify you or disqualify you in combat sports. And in the NFL, we have seen any number of players, particularly linemen, who have to meet certain weight uh, requirements um, that are part of their contract. We just never seen it in basketball, or at least I don't know about it. And I live here in Washington, D.C., where the Bullets had three guys eat their way out of the league. Um, so, <laughs> but for Zion, um, to Harry's point, I mean, we have seen this struggle. He has been ridiculed in social media because Precisely. he looks overweight. So that's overweight. my point, Kevin. Is this getting to a point, again, where a team who ostensibly should want the best for their great, great player that they just right. invested in a quarter of a million dollars in, and, and they're opening the player up for questioning by fans, questioning, you know, by, by other players? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I think it underscores that, but I think, I think in this case, I think this is something that he maybe should embrace because there is seems to be a correlation between his fitness and his injuries. And maybe that's what they're trying to avoid, and he should as well. Thanks for your thoughts on that. Coming up in Buy or Sell Baseball, the latest on the trade deadline. And speaking of baseball, there's a certain series this week which proves itself a certain challenge for the graphics department <laughs> all over the league. We'll be back in two minutes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. The coffee. Around the Horn is presented by Corona Extra. Find the fine life. Live la vida más fina. Part of happy hour. That's why I think I'm not sure if this is going to go down right now. And as for Shohei, what I'm buying is that he's a different guy than Mike Trout. And Mike Trout might be happy with the Angels regardless of playoff appearances and legacy. But I see Shohei Otani potentially wanting out of there if they're not going to be a contending team. And they might have to trade him and get something instead of losing him for nothing. Tyler Louds Jr. Yeah, Tony, I'm buying that the Angels should probably move Otani, and that's not just because I think everybody that's a baseball fan wants to see it happen, but because <laughs> at some point or another, yes, you won the sweepstakes in 2018, and you got him on one of literally the best contracts in Major League Baseball history, but you're not going to have anything to show for it if you don't trade him for something because the window of you winning is probably closed. Okay, but wait, he's not a free agent at the end of this year. They still have him for a year. Kevin Blackstone, do they need to trade Otani in the next three days? Well, I don't think that they need to trade him, but I would say that there's more likelihood, I think, of Otani being dealt than Soto being dealt. And I would take the flip side of what Sarah said and say that I think that Soto is the asset that needs to convey with the team to a new owner because I think that gives the team more value going forward. Certainly for someone like me, who is a season ticket holder and is trying to consider mm -hmm. whether or not I want to buy tickets to see a team without Soto or buy continue to buy tickets to a team that has Soto. The only panelist who is a national season ticket holder. Mm -hmm. Tim Kalashaw. You know, I agree that Soto doesn't need to be dealt with as much time as he's got left 
before he's a free agent, but I got to buy A.J. Preller, who has one of the toughest jobs in sports, trying to compete with that team up the five freeway from yeah. San Diego that has a lot more TV dollars and a bit, much bigger market, and he is always in on deals, and he's always fine. Can you imagine rolling in an outfield with Soto and with Tatis both, and they're still early wow. 20s? All right, so, but no one, Tim thinks San Diego's in play for Soto. For Otani, throw out a team name. I didn't hear, is it the Mets? Could it be the Mets? Who is it? Gotta be the Mets. Yeah? Gotta be the Mets. Sarah? Yeah, probably the Mets. No fear probably of luxury tax. Uh, can you imagine throwing out a rotation in the playoffs? That's the Grom, Scherzer, Otani. Man, Ooh. this is just thrilling. We'll move on. Dak Prescott, 29th birthday today. You know what that means? It's the golden birthday. The day he's born and the age he's turning. No, you don't, you're shaking your head. No one knew what this was? Okay. <laughs> Sarah, you get it. Fine, you're supposed bonus points for you. Of uh, course. Dak Prescott <laughs> indicating he plans for this to be the golden year. He said, quote, I plan for this to be the golden year, end quote. Tim Kalashar, <laughs> you're off for Oxnard next week. Your golden trip by yourself. <laughs> don't know anything about golden birthdays. I'm sure I've had a couple. Golden no, I think you've had one. Like I honestly Arthur think you've had one. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just don't think, I, you know, it, look, Dak is not the problem in Dallas. Whatever happens this season, his problem is do they have the same wide receiver core huh? or an equal wide receiver core uh, to what they had a year ago? And the, and the answer would appear to be no, they do not. So you think that's one of the bigger problems for the team right now? Offensively, well, who's Dak throwing to? Clearly that and replacing a couple offensive linemen, replacing Randy Gregory. They, they have a lot of hope. Sarah Spain? Well, my birthday's on the 18th, so I very recently celebrated my golden birthday. <laughs> and I will tell you that it was extra special. So congratulations to Dak for that. Um, listen, I think it's great that he has big expectations. We all do. Dak is probably the one who's least under pressure here because he just got paid. McCarthy is under tremendous pressure. Jerry Jones... The pressure of time uh, to try to get another win before he's out of it. So this is a team that needs to start actually getting things done, and that means end of games, end of seasons, and not just putting up decent numbers in the regular season. I think they're starting to recognize Ari Lyles Jr.? Yeah, I'm selling that this is the golden year. They're missing Amari Cooper, Lyle Collins, Randy Gregory, and Connor Williams, and it didn't seem like they upgraded at any of those positions. So to me, I think that the Cowboys, this isn't quite it. And plus, if you look at the opening part of their schedule, four out of the six teams were playoff teams last year. So we are going to find out early whether or not this is actually the golden year. JB. I wonder what David Bowie's golden year was. Anybody know? At any rate, look, I think that uh, I think that, that Zeke, that without Zeke um, being all the, all there like he was, without the what? Diana called her shot. She started the season saying, "Why can't old people dream too?" She's old. She's dreaming. She's doing. Look, there's a reason basketball players, men or women, don't play until they're 40. It's hard. It's hard on the knees. And to be out there and doing what Diana Taurasi did at 40, scoring 30. That's got to be the go. Well, I am scoring at home, of course, as you know, Sarah, as the only panelist <laughs> who's going to her last game in a different city, uh -huh. but not the city mm -hmm. she was. All right. Yep. Let's put the point. We'll move on. Showdown two. We should have left the show with this. Panthers wide receiver Robbie Anderson changing the spelling of his first name. No more Robbie with a Y. He's now Robbie with an IE. The ramifications of this are what, Tim Kalashaw? He's changed his number. He's changed his spelling. Has he changed quarterbacks? That's what we don't know. And that's what caused Robbie's drop off last year. Maybe Baker can get him back to the 1,000-yard level no, with a new name. That. Any number of ramifications, i.e., we could have to go back and edit the spellings previously, i.e., we could in the future forget which one he left and which one he changed to. So many things. I would say go Robbie Y.E. because if you're going to change it, be original. Robbie Y.E. There was some Latin in there. It est. I'm going to give you the points for that. My brother, John Gavin's Latin class. Go ahead, Sarah Spain. I want to give a shout out to the That's What She Said podcast guest, Catherine Bertin, former ESPNW editor, former pro cyclist, who spearheaded the group of women who fought for the inclusion of women at the Tour de France. It's been 33 years, and right now they're racing their first multi-stage competition since then. Finishes on Sunday. You can watch on Peacock. You can watch on CNBC. Support the women. Shout out to Catherine. Wow, good job at a Catherine. And Sarah Spade, today's champion. <laughs> we'll see you Monday. Not speaking pig Latin over it. Happy Hour is presented by Corona Extra. Please drink responsibly. Pardon me, 
interruption, but I'm Frank Isola. It's our last show of the week, Mina. You've made such great points, and you've also been such a great listener. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, did you say something? The show has started. When the director says go, everyone perks.